Okay. Um, so I recently put together this ASCII shader. Um, this is for Unity URP. I coded this um, in version 2019.4.30 on um, Unity URP. And so I was just showing here how to set up the render feature uh, that I created for this and to drop in um, one of the font assets that will present the uh, ASCII shader here. So here I'm just playing through some uh, public domain video that I got online and showing me scaling through the iteration setting of um, my ASCII renderer. So what's happening with the iterations is I'm actually downscaling and upscaling using a box filter. And now I'm playing with the font color strength and backing color strength, which allows you to modify the colors um, that are used by the ASCII renderer. So this iterations again, you can scrub back and forth here to downscale and upscale. Uh, the more iterations, the uh, stronger the uh, blurriness factor. It's sort of similar to how you might create a bloom. And that helps reduce noisiness in the final ASCII render. I've also set up a variety of different aspect ratios that you can use. This um, asset is, is publicly available, by the way. It's on GitHub and will also be on the Unity Asset Store. Um, and it's also on my Patreon. So you can scrub through any number of columns um, if you have a particular look that you're trying to emulate. Personally, I prefer a higher column count. Uh, I think it makes the result look a bit smoother with an iteration setting around two or three. And then for lower column counts, I prefer a slightly higher number of rescaling iterations. One thing that I think is really cool is you can completely set the backing color. Um, so that the text is you know, completely only lit with the color of the underlying um, color samples. And the other thing that you can do is you can swap in and out uh, different text assets. So here I've put together about 10 different text assets that I'll switch through uh, as this video plays in the background. Um, and I'll also continue tweaking with the iterations to get a look that, that I think looks nice. This particular video um, is a bit darker. Uh, like the, the overall background is a bit darker. So you can see a lot more of the blank spaces that I use um, as the uh, lowest um, uh, character in the ASCII color set. Um, but you can... Uh, adjust the brightness and things like that by using the post-processing component or by directly increasing the brightness of your original content. Here I've swapped the font asset with a um, font asset that uses a lower number of total characters. So the ones we were looking at before had 10 um, different characters and 10 different gradations of um, of brightness. So here we swapped to the Montserrat Ultra Bold with only five characters, and then we're swapping back to one that has uh, ten. So the important things that you need to do when you do change the font asset is adjust the number of characters field and also the font ratio, which um, I still need to do here. And here I'm just playing around a little bit more with the backing color adjustments and with the number of iterations as I swap in and out these different text assets. So you can see that using different text assets, these I got from Google Fonts. Um, they're licensed under the OFL, Open Font License, although one of them I believe is licensed with the Apache license. Um, and you can really see these fonts shine, like this one, the permanent marker font at lower column count settings so that you can really see each character very clearly. This one in particular I think is really, really cool. Um, it has a very nice handwritten, uh, thick handwritten feel to it. 
Um, but one other cool thing that you can do with this asset is uh, actually completely remove the ASCII text and it sort of becomes a bit of a pixelized filter um, with pretty powerful underlying downscale upscale support. You can also invert the colors or um, really choose any color that you'd like as the backing color or as the font color too. Um, so for example, you can set the background to purple, blue, green, yellow. I really like this brown color and then I also like to bring the font color itself kind of to like a slightly brighter hue, uh, brighter brightness of the same hue or slightly offset hue. Um, and then use the font color strength to have something of a bit of an interpolation between the backing color and the font color here. I find that the videos that work best or content that works best for this type of filter is things that are pretty low noise, um, but quite high contrast. So this particular example of a city street, um, it's a bit more difficult to read as a viewer uh, unless you introduce the backing, backing color. Um, so you can see here it's a bit tricky to read, but once we bump up the column count to 128, um, it instantly becomes quite easy. Although at lower iterations, it can remain somewhat noisy. This one looks a bit like a photo, but in fact, it is still a video. Um, and you can see some of the leaves in the background moving slightly, resulting in slight color changes as I change in and out the different font assets that um, I've pre-made. Um, I find that the font assets that work the best here are ones that um, are rendered at a pretty low resolution. So um, in my image editor, I go ahead and pop that open, create a, an image at a 128 by 512 pixel scale. And then in a column down the middle, um, center justified, I write out my character set. Um, and the character set I've been using here is the same character set across the different fonts. Um, and then I just pop that in here. If you're using fewer characters or more characters, you may need to adjust the font ratio. Um, basically, that says at a 1 to X or 1 to what ratio do you have your um, characters within your uh, texture sheet. So m since most of my characters here are at um, about, about of a 1 to 3 ratio, basically running down the middle third, of the 128 by 512 texture. Then I've been keeping this at 3, but you would have seen earlier I adjusted the font ratio to a ratio of 1 for that character set that only had 5 characters. The version of Montserrat Ultra Bold with only 5 characters. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is bringing the backing color strength all the way to 1 with a black background. Um, just letting the video run here, you can see that the um, fact that we can use the underlying image color for the font colors um, really makes the image look super cool um, and it adds a really unique look to the, uh, to the final product. Adds a lot of detail to it as well. Sometimes I'll swap back and forth between different iterations trying to find the setting that looks kind of gives the best balance between detail and um, between noise. Um, going too low can kind of just give a really nice um, sort of background filter. Uh, I think it would look really good in, you know, like if you have a ASCII style game and you want to use a filter like this to uh, filter the background when you pop open a, a UI element, I think that would look really cool uh, at a lower um, number of iterations, or sorry, higher number of iterations, bring the downscaling further. So I'm just going to zoom in. I want to show you this particular font at a slightly higher, slightly higher level of detail, um, so you can really see the the details of this font. I find that fonts that are uh, bold or ultra bold fonts work really well, and I also find that um, mono spaced and display fonts work quite well as well. Um, 
Here I'm just playing with some of the post-processing effects. This particular effect is ran just before post-processing, so any post-processing uh, effects that you have running will affect the results of the ASCII filter as opposed to the input to the ASCII filter. Um, I did that because I found that uh, executing the uh, ASCII filter using the after post-processing texture um, was causing some noisiness even when uh, leaving the camera in place and looking at fairly simple scenes. Um, and so I felt like that trade-off wasn't exactly worth it. Um, and so at this moment, I've uh, restricted the rendering pass event to just uh, before post-processing. Um, although I do have a branch on GitHub that supports uh, after post-processing as well. Now this is showing off the pixelize version of this filter. It's really cool, I think. Um, and you can uh, bias the backing color to any backing color you'd like. And um, in different scenes, you may need to adjust the iterations to get a, a kind of level of detail that looks quite good for your particular scene. I think we'll just let the video run for a little bit. Um, this particular font, Sigmar 1, has a really cool um, at sign, in my opinion, as does the Modak uh, font that I've also included in this package. Um, so we'll just let it run. You can see here that uh, examples like this, where um, the range is kind of biased towards the, the, the lower brightness values, don't read quite as well um, without uh, adjusting the backing color to incorporate that into at least the font color, um, since there's uh, not a lot of detail in some areas. I really like using these uh, soft brown colors. I think that they look really good. Um, and I also like playing with the aspect ratios. So in this example, uh, you can see that um, you can use either a 16 by 9 aspect ratio from the enums I've set up, or a 9 by 16 aspect ratio for the, uh, for the I guess you could call them pixels, ASCII pixels. Although one thing to keep in mind is that at the narrower uh, aspect ratios, you can end up with the edges of particular um, characters getting clipped off. Um, that issue is not really present at the wider aspect ratios due to how I'm calculating the, the UVs of the sampling for the character sets. Um, so this asset is available for free on GitHub. It's also available um, for free on my Patreon. I'll include links in the description below for both of those um, so that you can download it and use it in your project um, if you'd like. I find URP to be really powerful at quickly setting up and shipping image effects like this. Uh, it's fully built in shader graph, by the way. Um, perhaps I'll make another um, demonstration walking through the shader graph and showing how I've set that up. But in the meantime, if you're interested, you can go ahead and download it and take a look through it yourself. Thanks for watching.